A relationship with a narcissist is draining, stressful, and sometimes even severely traumatizing. There are usually three basic phases that repeat themselves. Although every relationship with a narcissist has individual features, the process always looks similar. We would like to present these stages to you in today's video. Today, the three phases of a relationship with a narcissist. If you like our videos, please support us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Psychology in Mind, activate the little bell, and get ready for new videos uploaded for you every day. Now let's move on to the three phases. Number 1. The Illusion Phase The illusion phase is about the victim getting involved in the relationship. At this point, the narcissist showers you with supposed love and thus binds you to him. Because this takes an extremely long time, he isolates you from your other friends and family. You are supposed to focus only on him. This phenomenon is called love bombing. If you want to learn more about it, feel free to watch our video about it. You can find the link in our video description. In addition, the narcissist also finds out what is important to you and what you want. He implements everything you want in order to fulfill your expectations and then declares that this is just as important to him. In this way, he makes you believe that you are soulmates, destined for each other, the perfect partners. The narcissist builds up the illusion that he is the only one who can take care of you, that he supposedly wants only the best for you and that he also knows best what you need. Allegedly, all his steps are made out of pure love. The narcissist creates the belief that you should consider yourself lucky to be loved by him. If, in this phase, distrust arises in you, the narcissist will probably turn the problem around. He will explain to you that you are the problem, that it is due to fear of commitment, that you are too sensitive or pathologically distrustful. He will give you the idea, by contrast, that his love is perfect. Number 2. Devaluation Phase In the devaluation phase, the narcissist begins to insult you, but also your friends and family. Anger outbursts and threats set in, sometimes even physical and sexual assaults. The attacks come in blow after blow and invariable intensity. Sometimes victims, out of fear, try to keep the narcissist away from their loved ones further isolating themselves. Initially, it is possible for violence and professions of love to alternate, but the professions of love will steadily decrease. The narcissist explains his abuse with elaborate excuses. Because the devaluation phase usually occurs overnight, many are in shock. Then, typically, you look for the blame within yourself. The constant back and forth of love and devaluation is disturbing and traumatizing. It completely undermines your own self-perception. As a consequence, anxiety and agitation, severe psychological distress, and even depression can occur. The narcissist, on the other hand, invests less and less time in the relationship himself and is already looking for a new victim. Number 3. The Throwaway Phase The throwaway phase does not happen inevitably. It only happens when the narcissist realizes that you want to break off the relationship or when you start to resist. Then he tries to make himself the winner by dropping you before you can leave him. By dropping you before you can leave him. The throwaway phase can also occur when you have become exhausted or depressed with your partner and therefore uninteresting. In the throwaway phase, the narcissist's power and control reach their peak and he tends to be extremely cruel. In the process, he completely reverses the relationship of perpetrator and victim. He involves family and friends and corrals them to act distant and dismissive towards you. With this last stage, the narcissist will once again make you believe he's doing it for your own good. If this does not work, the narcissist tries to get rid of you by all means. The third stage might be followed by a stage called hovering. In this phase, the narcissist tries to get a foot in the door one more time, picking up on manipulations that already exist and trying to drag you back into the cycle. Because these attempts can be constant and draining, it is best to strictly break off all contact after breaking up with a narcissist. We have already made a video on hovering as well. Thanks for watching. Did you find this information helpful? Do you have experience with it? We would love to hear from you. 
Leave a comment below and let us know your thoughts. For more resources about mental health, self-improvement, and psychology, visit our website. You'll find the link in the video description where you can also connect with us on social media and sign up for our email list. Take care of yourself and have a beautiful day.